Hi everyone, X Viz M here from Active Health Clinic. Today I want to talk about coat hanger pain in people with POTS. Coat hanger pain has picked up its name because it's pain that we tend to experience around our neck region and our upper back. So it would be those areas where a coat hanger would sit if we had one of those in the back of our shirt. People with, with POTS experience coat hanger pain uh, because they have impaired blood flow to their upper body and it tends to be present when we are working at levels that are above our baseline or are under stress, whether that be from hot weather, from lots of things that we have been doing physically or um, from standing up or sitting for long periods of time because we know both of those things are going to cause blood pooling and impair our blood flow. So what can we do about coat hanger pain? For people with POTS? There's a couple of things. The first thing is consider posture. So if we're standing or sitting for long periods of time, then we need to mix up our posture or move a little bit so that we can get the blood flow going. This doesn't have to be anything crazy or over the top. It could simply be flexing our calf muscles, our bum muscles, those sorts of things so that we get some movement. And alternating between positions is really helpful too. So going from sitting to standing or standing to sitting, just to get that movement again. The other thing that we can do is movement based in terms of stretches and gentle exercise. So stretches can be a really great way to help relieve um, that discomfort in the moment. And exercise can also help to increase blood flow to that area but also relieve discomfort in the moment, like the stretches, and to help prevent coat hanger pain down the track as well. So I'm gonna go through some stretches and some exercises that I think are really beneficial and that I often use myself and share those with you so that you can either use them if you've got POTS or you've got them to prescribe to patients that you might be working with with POTS as well. The first stretch that I'm going to show you is a thoracic tilt stretch. Now, I don't know if that's actually the, the scientific name for it, but it sounds good. Let's go with it. What we're going to do for this is we'll pop our hands across our chest like that and you'll rotate gently to the side. So see how far you can go, but we also want to make sure that it's still comfortable. Then once we've rotated, you'll tilt. You'll feel a stretch down your side and also in your back as well. I'd hold this for five, 10, 15 seconds. See how you go, see what you're comfortable with. Then coming up, you'll rotate again to see if now that you've had a stretch, you can get a little bit further with that movement and tilt to the side. Beautiful. So you can do that three or four times on each side. And then you want to balance yourself out as well so that you're stretching both sides. So rotating to the other side and tilt. See how I'm tilting from my shoulders as well and not just my neck. And then back up, rotate a little bit further if you can. Again, staying comfortable and tilt. Beautiful. So, Keep in mind, if you are hypermobile or you have a patient that's hypermobile, because this is something that we do often see um, as a presentation with people that have POTS, that they may not get as much of a stretch as somebody who doesn't have hypermobility, but the movement itself is still gonna be beneficial because we know that moving and activating those muscles is gonna increase blood flow to that area as well and really help with the coping of pain. The next stretch or exercise that I'm going to show you is called a cat camel and it might be familiar to quite a few of you. So this exercise, as you'll see, involves arching and flexing your back in a four point position. You'll notice as I go through the movement that you can see the areas of the upper back that are activated as I'm doing it. And it makes sense because we're increasing blood flow while we're also stretching in that position. So that's why it's good for people with POTS. But 
The thing to consider as well is from a postural perspective. So if you are quite symptomatic and you have trouble getting up and down off the floor without getting symptoms, then keep in mind to make that transition slow. Or I can also show you a modified version of this exercise, but I'll start with the cat camel first. So four points. So it is a really nice movement, but if you want something a little bit simpler for say you're at work or you're studying and you just don't have the space to be using the ground, or like I said, you have postural symptoms and getting up and down is too challenging, do a seated version of this as well. So you can sit cross-legged however you're comfortable, bring your shoulder blades together and then roll your shoulders forward. Pulling back, bring your shoulder blades together and then roll the shoulders forward. So it's really up to you which one you prefer or which one you think is going to suit your patients the most. The last exercise that I'm going to go through for coat hanger pain today is our band pull apart exercise. So if you've got a band at home, that's great. You could use something else as well, like some tubing or anything stretchy that you might use for exercise. For this one, what we're going to do is holding the band in each hand, making sure we've got the right amount of resistance. So we don't want it to be too heavy but we do want some resistance there as well. You'll hold the band at the front. You'll pull your arms back, bringing your shoulder blades together and relax. You'll notice that I keep my elbows bent during this as well so that I'm not extending, which is something that's pretty important for people if they have hypermobility as well, because we don't want their joints locking out. By bringing our shoulder blades together at the back, we're really making sure that we're engaging those muscles that tend to be quite sore with coat hanger pain. So I really love this one because not only will it give us some of that instant relief from coat hanger pain, but it's also gonna help to strengthen those muscles down the track. And we know the stronger our muscles are, the more likely we are to have better blood flow to that area and the less likely we are to have coat hanger pain. So those are some of my favourite exercises to help manage coat hanger pain. I know that they're ones that I often use for myself and definitely ones that I will incorporate in my prescription for our patients here at the clinic as well. Hopefully this video was helpful and that you know a little bit more about what coat hanger pain is, why it's prevalent in people with POTS and also how you can go about managing it too. But if you have more questions, let us know, reach out, send us a message, and we are more than happy to help out.